हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी चैप्टर टू इज मैटर अराउंड अस प्योर ऑफ क्लास नाइन्थ केमिस्ट्री ना सी ऑलरेडी यू हैव स्टडीड अबाउट मैटर दैट एनीथिंग व्हिच हैज मास एंड ऑक्यूपाइज द स्पेस इज नोन एज मैटर ओके दिस यू हैव स्टडीड इन चैप्टर फर्स्ट ऑफ दिस क्लास नाइन्थ so in this chapter we are going to study whether the matter which is present around us is pure or not okay so basically when we talk about pure and impure substance what do you mean by that in chemistry something which is made up of one type of particle is known as a pure substance while the impure substance means it contains two or more than two substances that means according to science most of the matter around us is not pure but in general terms we say a substance which is pure means it is not at all adulterated and an impure substance is adulterated so now here we can see if we talk about about water copper oxygen carbon dioxide gas they all are containing pure form of matter while lemonade any salt solution tea air and soil it is impure soil as you can see it is impure because the moment you see the soil the content the texture it looks uniform but it is made up of organic substance some minerals rocks sand etc and also soil has various layers now when we talk of pure substances we say that elements and compounds are the example of pure substance why because pure substance is one that has a uniform composition same texture color taste etc it is not possible to change the composition of pure substances it has a fixed boiling and melting point so pure substance has all the properties as fixed while we talk of any element element means it is made up of only one kind of atom if we talk of oxygen as an element it is made up of only oxygen atom now if we say that compound compound is also pure why because if we talk of, take water as an example full one glass of water is made up of only water molecules that means only h2o molecules are present hence elements and compounds are the examples of pure substances now impure substance means a substance which is made up of more than one element more than one substance or more than one compound the best example is the homogeneous and the heterogeneous mixture you can see the diagram on the left hand side it has a uniform arrangement all the atoms are arranged so nicely while the diagram on the right hand side has a non uniform arrangement of particles interatomic particles okay so homogeneous mixture example is true solution while heterogeneous is colloids and suspensions which are go which we are going to study further in this video now first we'll talk about true solutions true solutions are homogeneous mixture of two or more substances where we have a solute solute is the substance which is present in small quantity while solvent is the substance which is present in large amount here you can see the example is water solute and the solvent together combine to form a true solution next are colloids they are the mixtures which has a particle size between 1 nanometer and solute particles are from 10 to 1000 times bigger than that of single small molecules these particles are smaller than suspension colloids are heterogeneous mixture they can pass through filter paper and are not visible by naked eyes okay colloidal particles show tindall effect and brownian movement in colloidal solution large particles are called disper disperse phase while the solvent particles or the smaller particles 
are known as dispersion medium and they together combine to form a colloid. Tyndall effect is one of the very famous phenomena and the property of your colloids. So what happens the path of light is visible because of the colloidal particle and this is only possible because of the colloidal particle the zigzag movement of the colloidal particle the colloidal particles they collide and due to this zigzag movement this zigzag movement is known as brownian movement so as you can see in the diagram the uh, the path of the light is clearly visible in case of colloids this canopy of forest is also an example of colloids okay and it, it is sorry and it is showing tyndall effect now this is your true solution, true solution the, the particles do not settle down okay for example your salt solution okay colloidal solution, colloidal solution we have already discussed that milk is a colloidal solution, blood is a colloid okay uh, suspension, suspension you have chalk, wa uh, chalk water mixture or you have sand water mixture it gets suspended the chalk gets suspended or the sand sand particles get suspended at the bottom of the beaker or whichever container you have taken and this is one of the finest example which shows the difference between true solution colloidal solution and suspension also here you can see the uh, particle size you can see the colloidal particle size and the second diagram you can see solution particle size and the suspension particle size clear now clearly it is visible in the third diagram the suspension one you can see that the particles are settling down these are the various examples of colloid containing dispersed phase and dispersion medium and which category the colloids come okay so when we are dealing with the solutions you have a one numerical part uh, that how you can measure the uh, or you can express the concentration of a solution so basically we are uh, we'll, we'll be learning uh, two methods one is mass by mass percentage of a solution the other one is mass by volume percentage of solution in the first one you uh, if you are having mass of a solute and in the denominator you have to put mass of the solution and then you will be multiplying it by 100 so you will be getting mass percentage similarly you will be calculating the volume percentage according to the given data which which may be given in your numerical or any of the examples now here comes the various methods of separation of homogeneous heterogeneous mixture so the various methods are filtration evaporation centrifugation separating funnel okay then you have sublimation uh, crystallization distillation fractional distillation chromatography and centrifugation okay so these uh, see basically the mixtures can be separated into their respective components by some physical methods also like hand picking sieving etc but some special methods are also used and these are the list of some special methods which we are going to study in detail the first one is mag 